G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, Monday evening here in Australia, the market is down again, just holding on to that $2 trillion mark as we can see, 2.03 trillion. Uh, we could be going lower, we'll have to wait and see. Should be sort of Monday morning-ish stateside time and we'll wait and see what the markets do. Are they going to react positively to the dip or is it gonna be further selling off? That really is the big question. But look, while the overall market's sort of down a little bit and we got Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's, Bitcoin trending sort of sideways, dipping a little bit, there's some altcoins that are really, really pumping. So, you know, there's upsides and downsides, but considering we're down 5.2%, I think the upsides uh, for the coins that did well are obviously going to be outdone by uh, the downside. So that's no good. But anyway, let's have a look. Bitcoin uh, dominance rising back over 41%. Uh, volume is actually up a little bit, so that's interesting. People uh, may be buying the dip. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out in the next little while. And gas prices up again a little bit, so around sort of $5. So again, is that people jumping into stable coins? Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Now, prices, I mean, Bitcoin, 44500 so uh, not great, but again, still above sort of old resistance and support, which is at sort of 42000 And we'll have a look at that, but ETH, 3200 ADA, $2.37. So obviously the big story at the moment is, but I couldn't really find any actual news about it, was Cardano smart contracts went live. So it does seem like it was buy the rumor, sell the news. So Cardano seems to be going down at the moment, but I actually couldn't find any stories about the actual smart contracts themselves and how they're running. Just old stories saying that they were worried about things were gonna happen or people being real hyped about it, but nothing that actually says how it's going. So I'm guessing within the next 24 to 48 hours, I guess we'll sort of have the news about exactly how that has played out. But look, it doesn't look good, does it? But I mean, look, Polkadot, there you go, having a bit of move. So it's not that coins aren't, you know, doing well, but generally most things are down. And again, to be expected when the market's down 5.2%. All right, let's have a look then. What's done the best in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? There we go. Tezos is up. Adam's up. Elrond Gold is up. Polka Dot's up. Even Tron's up. Good Lord. Uh, and Stack. So we got six that are actually up. Uh, no double digit gains, but look, anyone's going to take a gain, but then we go straight into the losses. So let's move on to the losses then. We might sort of see some bad ones considering overall the market is down 5.2%. Well, there we go. Cello, uh, AVAX, Phantom, Terra Luna, Arweave, Sol. Again, that was, you know, it was always going to come down. That's just the way it is. Nothing can keep going up forever. But look, if the market suddenly turns around today, Solana could definitely be on another upwards trend. You know, you know, we'll have to just wait and see where that ends up. It really is kind of hard to know uh, exactly where it's going to go from here, but it pumped really, really hard. So chances are it's probably going to have a fairly hefty correction. But again, I'm not offering you any financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor and I don't legitimately know where things are going. It's all just my personal opinion and me taking what I like to consider an educated guess, but down 14%, uh, eCash down 12%, so lots of big double digit losses we can see there, basically right across the board. All right, let's go and have a look. So here's the Bitcoin chart, and this is basically what I follow. I like to keep my charts really, really simple. This is where we were after the big, uh, you know, sell, everything sell off back in March last year. And this is the channel that we've generally been following. We've been bouncing out above it, which was really nice. We bounced out below it, which really wasn't all that good. But what we can do is we can see, this is where it formed some support. Bounced off it, almost bounced off it, bounced off it, almost, almost definitely bounced off it, bounced off it. So really, it's under 28,000 that I would actually really start to get worried. And I would think, yep, we are definitely uh, in a bear market. But here's the thing, if we're in a bear market, it's really hard to know where Bitcoin's going to bottom out. So for me, I'm just gonna keep buying Bitcoin on the way down. Put a little bit of cash to the side. So again, if I'm investing $100 a week and the market's going down, 
Bitcoin's going to go down the least. That's just the way it works, other than stable coins. But the problem is you don't know when it can turn around. And if you think you can outplay the market, sweet, you go ahead and do it. But for me, if I've got $100, let's say a week, I wish I had $100 a week to put in, it'd be good. Let's just say I did. And big, the whole market was going down. I'll be putting $50 a week, maybe $40 a week into Bitcoin. And then the other $50 to $60, I'd be putting into a stable coin waiting to hopefully find the bottom. The reason I don't just put it all into the stable coins is because I don't know when it could turn around. And I would rather just be scaling in on the way down to make those gains. Trying to pick the exact bottom is really, really hard. Just when you think you've got it figured out, and if you've been watching my uh, channel, you know I've got plenty of things wrong, but I've got some things right as well. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've had a lot more right than I've had wrong, but in saying that, that's easy to do in a bull market. It's when it turns into a bear market that things really become hard. But if Bitcoin's going down, I'm putting basically 40 to 50% of it into Bitcoin because that's the time that I want to do it. Invest mainly into Bitcoin when it's below old all-time highs until I feel like a bottoming pattern is in. Then that other sort of 60% cash, 50% cash I was putting on the side, I'll deploy half of that when I think it's at the bottom. And the reason I deploy half is because in case I'm wrong and it continues to dip, then I've still got another half to wait and see what happens. And again, I keep doing the same until I feel like we've really found a bottoming pattern, then I will look to deploy you know, a lot more cash. But I always want to have a little bit of cash sitting on the side. So for me, let's now zoom into sort of where we are right now. I'm really not too worried at all. Could it be a bear market? Absolutely, it's possible but I don't think it is. We're only just trading below this general upwards trend it's been in for a while, but we're still above this old support resistance that it's bounced off a couple of times, uh, got rejected from a couple of times, and again, found support. So really, until we go below 42,000, I'm not too worried. And even if we do go below 42,000, it's really not until 28,000 that I'm really going to go, yep, you know what, I think we are in a bear market somewhere in between there but uh, again even you know we get down to sort of 36,000 I'm not going to be worried it really will be we go below 28,000 and then all that happens is the altcoins that I have which will have probably been drained a whole lot by then but I will be looking to scale well out of my altcoin positions and look I might even start to do that if we truly do start to get into kind of the 36,000 and below now not a wick if we have some big crazy wick that dips down there, then I'm not too worried. It will legitimately be when we have daily closes doing that kind of thing. But my Bitcoin, I'm not selling. I'll consider selling some Bitcoin at 90-ish, 100,000. And that's only consider. There's no guarantees I'll do it. So if we continue to go down, I'm going to keep buying more Bitcoin and I'm not selling. That's me. you got to work out what's right for you. Ethereum. I'll buy Ethereum too on the way down. I like Ethereum. If we are going into a bear market, Solana, something that looks pretty good. I want to do a little bit more research, but from everything I've sort of seen, it looks pretty good. I'll start to scale into Solana because that's when I want to be buying things on the way down. And I know a lot of people will be like, you don't want to catch a falling knife. No, you're right, you don't. But I don't know where the bottom is. I don't know where the top is. So what I want to do is I want to buy on the way down. And then when it starts to go up, hopefully, because there's no guarantees in life, I will make good profit without trying to hold on to all this cash thinking I know when the bottom's going to come and just get it wrong. Uh, I've said this before, Rockefeller said he's never sold the top and he's never bought the bottom. But he made a whole lot of money in between. And that's exactly where I am. I don't have to know exactly when the top is. I don't have to know exactly when the bottom is. As long as I am thereabouts, again, don't get me wrong, I'm not buying Solana right now at $150, but if I see Solana go under $100, I'm starting to buy. I'm happy to buy Bitcoin any price right now, as long as it's not $64,000. And don't get me wrong, I still buy Bitcoin at $64,000, but I just put a lot less into it. I put more into Bitcoin on the way down and less on the way up because the altcoins get the exponential gains on the way up 
not on the way down. They get hammered. They get exponential losses. So that's my theory. That's where I am. And like I said, I'm just not too worried at the moment. Bitcoin, just outside of this upwards trending channel. I reckon we're going to chop around for a while again. Maybe we come down to 42,000, even with a wick that maybe comes down into the 37, 38, 36,000. Just to really get everyone scared because, again, it'll be about people going long and people going short. Too many people going short, you can guarantee Bitcoin's going to have a pump. Too many people going uh, long, you can guarantee Bitcoin's probably going to go down. Well, not guarantee. Again, nothing. none of that's financial advice. And sometimes the big money plays in with the theme until they think now's the perfect time to do the complete opposite. Hence why I don't leverage trade. I, I just in, I buy. I'm an investor. And again, if I know Bitcoin's been at 64000 and it's currently selling for 42000 I'm buying it basically, well, or 44000 sorry, but I'm buying it at a $20,000 discount. And if it goes down to 32, 33, then I'm buying because I'm buying at nearly half price. And if it goes down to 20,000 and 19,000 and 10,000, I'm buying because I'm getting it at a great price. I would rather be buying it on the way down because it is no fundamentally really bad news. It's just, you know, uh, the turn of the market. But like I said, I'll be leaving those stable coins on the side. I'm not throwing everything I have into it because I want to make sure that we've got a bottom position, but I still want to be buying some. So that is where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. You need to make your own decisions up again, whether you go 60-40 or you just go zero and you put all your cash and hold to you know try and time the exact bottom. But again, I like to take pointers from people who've done well in life. And I re as soon as I heard that saying by Rockefeller, I loved it. I've never sold the top. I've never bought the bottom but I made a lot of money in between. And that's me. I'm not, you know, this TA expert. I'm not this, uh, you know, savant analyst and all the rest of it. I don't need to be. I've made some pretty good money so far from crypto with just being in between. And I'm happy to just be buying and selling in between. Sometimes I'll get it really right, and that's great. And other times I won't get it so right, and that's okay. It's about having more winners than losers and my entire time I've been in crypto, I've had more winners than losers. But that doesn't mean it's super easy. Anyway, I'm going to move on. I've been harping on a bit. I don't like to do that too much, but that is me. <laughs> I do do that a little bit. All right, a couple of interesting stories. So the Fed balance sheet hits $8.357 trillion. So they're still printing more money right now. The US Central Bank has been busily hoovering up mortgage-backed securities and treasury bonds, buying them with new dollars it creates as its own at its own discretion. So the printing hasn't stopped, and who knows when it's going to stop, if it ever will stop. So as long as they keep printing more money, it can only be good for assets, really. It doesn't mean it's immediate. It doesn't mean that that automatically goes, right, yeah, well, Bitcoin now has to go to 100,000, but in the long run, it's telling you that the dollar is going to be deflated even more and more and more. This is likely just a correction. Again, we had a really good pump. Let's have a look. Let's measure it. What did we just do? That's an 80% pump. In how long? 20th of July, August, September. Less than two months we had an 80% pump. So would it not be unthinkable for Bitcoin to maybe have to come back down and retest this $42,000 mark before we then start to maybe make another 80% move? And let's have a look. What's 80% from 42,000? Let's say it then goes on another 80% uh, run from 42,000. Have a look at that. 80%? Thereabouts, sorry, gets us to $76,000. That is just this repeating itself. It's got to come back down, test this. And again, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but would that be so bad if we had to come back and retest 42,000? Maybe we would come down a little bit lower to, you know, sort of 41, 40,000. And then it's still going to make a new all-time high. No guarantees, not financial advice,
but that's what you need to remember. Markets don't just simply go up. And particularly when they go up 80% in less than two months, yeah, you might have to have a 20, 30% uh, retracement before you get another 80% up from there. Just keep that in mind. That's all I want you to think about. All right. 48% of Brazilians support making Bitcoin their official currency. If Brazil makes Bitcoin their official currency, that will be one of the biggest sort of lower nations in the world and that will really start a cascade effect. I think it's already started. The Ukraine's looking to do it. Panama's looking at doing it. I think Mexico are looking at doing it. Now, whether they're going to make it their official currency, but they're going to make it a legal currency, the domino effects are starting to roll already. If you can't see it, I don't know what to tell you, and I don't know what other information I could bring to you. I just... We've come such a long way even since 2017 when I first got into the market. You know, we have institutional money here now. And so they are going to play their games. And they're going to do everything they can to shake you out. Because you've got to remember, there's 21 million Bitcoin in total. There's only like about 2 million left to be mine. It's possible that up to 6 million, 4 to 6 million have just been lost. For me like I'm buying Bitcoin and I'm just holding on to Bitcoin. Like I said, at around about sort of 90 to 100,000, I will consider, and that's what it is. It is consider selling some. But outside of that, I'm just not interested. What's the point? It's such a finite, not even finite, a fixed amount. There's 21 million in total, two and a half million left to be mined. I'd rather just buy it and hold on to it for the long haul. And again, the interest that you'll be able to get off that someday in the future. And I know there's all this regulatory FUD and that going on at the moment, but I really think all that will go away in time. It might take a year, it might take two, it could take five. I think it's highly unlikely to take five. I think we've probably got it sorted within the next year to two, and I think probably maybe even towards more likely within the next year. Everything will be sorted, and will it be perfect and the best ever uh, regulations that we all really want? No. It's going to be a mix of in-between of the ones we really don't want, but also the ones that we do want. And that's how life always is. It's always finding that balance and the balance will come. And again, we're really focused on what's happening in the US because they are the monetary, you know, financial, you know, system of the entire world. The other countries are just going ahead and doing stuff without the US the US will simply fall in line. They will have no choice, particularly as this domino effect starts. Remember that old saying, trickle, 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 flood. And the trickle's already started and it's continuing to grow. Again, particularly Brazil uh, does this and then Mexico even more so. And then again, you know, like the Ukraine, more and more countries are going to jump on board because the US dollar is just being printed uh, to infinity and again even if they stop printing it and you know we go into some kind of deflation and that that's not going to last forever in the end they will simply have to print more money that is how the fiat system works they will always have to print more money eventually they might have periods where they don't but eventually they will print more money you will not be able to print more bitcoin you will not be able to print more most of these uh cryptocurrencies have a, a fixed cap not all ethereum uh, has uh, a sort of unlimited cap but it has a burn mechanism as well so there's all sorts of things going on so for me i just i look at these things and i go i know where i want to put my money now do i dump just all of my money in just all the time no you got to have some money sitting on the side got to have money coming in you know i've still got a job that brings in money. I don't take all of that money and just pump every single little last bit into crypto though. You know, I need more money. I've got to be able to pay bills, you know, feed myself and all that. And I can't do that with crypto at the moment. So it is an investment strategy. It's not a life strategy. But that's not to say that it couldn't become a complete life strategy. And I think, you know, into the future, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 years, it probably will be. I just, I don't know where fiat will be in the future. But again, I get the feeling like, Cryptocurrencies uh, like Bitcoin will probably end up saving the dollar. 1K invested in Solana in January 2021 is now worth 138,000. 
I want you to think about that. Now, I miss this. I am kicking myself. I had a chance. I remember hearing about Solana and I just didn't do enough research and didn't get on board. So I've missed it. And look, it's not the only one that I've missed. If you put $10,000, and I think uh, the Martini guy put this up on Twitter before, if you put 10000 into uh, Elrond in December 2020, you'd have about 400000 right now. But I mean, you can you know divide that by four and you still get to around about this anyway. So you go... Uh, you know, a fourth of uh, 10,000, which is two and a half thousand, you would have turned that into around about a hundred thousand. So, not as good as Solana, but still pretty good. So, there is huge money to be made now. If the cycles are still playing out and it's the four year cycle, it's going to be harder and harder to do this. But this is the kind of money you can make. You literally can. I mean, if you had to put a thousand, two thousand dollars into ADA or Matic back in uh, sort of March last year and particularly if you had got out uh, a couple of months ago you would have got well over a hundred thousand dollars from a thousand dollars well over you know Matic made it to two dollars twenty uh, Ada was at three dollars not that long ago now they've come down since but they're still worth a ton of money a ton of money so again there is that's the kind of investment you can make now it's not easy and you have to hold and you've got to get, I won't say lucky, but you've got to, you know, be at least a little bit smart. Don't just throw $1,000 at anything thinking you're going to make these kind of gains. You're not. It's unlikely. But if you do your research, it's more likely. Where else can you turn up $1,000 into $138,000, $140,000? Outside of crypto, I don't know where. All right, last but not least. Former Ripple execs are going to launch micropayments platform to tackle transaction fees. <sighs> I thought Ripple would have did that. But anyway, well, Ripple's uh, not up and running at the moment with the SEC. So Jeremy Light, former vice president of strategic accounts at Ripple, and Richard Bell, a former senior director at the Payments Network, founded Ping and Pay on the belief the network will be a good fit for Web 3.0 infrastructure and ecosystems. And they went to say... No one has yet cracked the sub $20 digital payment market, said Bell. The major card networks can process tens of thousands of payments per second. But even so, the cheapest debit card payments cost retailers up to 33 cents per payment, which represents 20% of a dollar payment. So they are really going after kind of third world nations and things like that, uh, underdeveloped nations where... You know, they're probably not going to be selling, sending $20. They might be sending $5 or even, you know, $10 or something like that. And if you're losing 20% uh, of, you know, just a dollar, uh, that tends to really, really hurt. So it'll be interesting. I mean, Ripple is pretty cheap when you send it. I literally don't even know. I haven't sent any Ripple for a long time, but it is dirt cheap. So it'll be interesting to see exactly where they're going with this. Uh, yeah. Very, very interesting because, yeah, you would not send $20 worth of Ethereum at the moment. It would absolutely kill you. Now, the other ones, you know, Solana do it on the Polygon network and things like that. Uh, different story, quite cheap. But the problem is then, you know, if you want to change it out from the Polygon network back to Ethereum, uh, it can really, really hurt. And so until some of the bigger exchanges maybe go on the Polygon network, uh, like Coinbase is looking to do, and then you don't have to swap in and out, and they are looking for that to all change. And in the future, uh, that won't be kind of the issue that it is now. Because that, that is one of the the bottlenecks at the moment is, you know, you've got to take your Ethereum, you've got to change it into uh, Polygon. There's a fee for that. Do all your transactions super cheap, which is good, but then you've got to change it back to Ethereum. Again, there's another fee for that. So really, you, st you still start to lose money. As long as you're just staying on the Polygon network, then no worries. But try to come off the Polygon network and the fees will get you. Uh, that is a real dilemma. And again, we're just praying that this Ethereum 2.0 kind of comes quicker, you know, sooner rather than later, as they say, because it's just getting destroyed at the moment by NFTs uh, and the fees that are associated with it and all these other super smart contracts that are coming out that are way cheaper and allegedly more scalable and all the rest of it. They still need the development, things like that, you know, people building on it and they don't have anywhere near their kind of uh, development that Ethereum has. But every day these Ethereum uh, prices stay sky high. 
they grow and grow. All right, that's it from me. I won't take up any more of your time. Again, we're waiting for the market to open and see what happens. And also just some news on how these Cardano smart contracts are actually working. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment considering the market is down 5.2%. But if you've outplayed the market, well done. And I'll see you next time.